Okay, uh, welcome and thank you for connecting to BC205. This is the class on keys to supernatural ministry. Uh, we've gone over some um, questions and had a discussion in the last class. So we will uh, study further and uh, try and understand what supernatural ministry mandate is all about and what the keys uh, would be from scripture that we have to um, uh, walk with. So before we get into today's class, uh, I want to request one of us to please lead in a word of prayer. Uh, would anyone like to lead, please? Okay, yes, Jafina, please go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we are about to have. God, you have, you are a supernatural God and supernatural things are natural with you. And you have given us the authority and you have called us as your sons and daughter. Help us to understand more about you so that we can live like you down here on this earth. Be with us and guide us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jafina. Uh, so as uh, I was saying, we have uh, discussed you know, a, question, a couple of things in the last class where we talked about the importance of supernatural ministry. Why supernatural ministry? Uh, is there a need for us as believers today to demonstrate the supernatural power of God? And we had several answers. We talked about how it reveals God's nature. It glorifies God. It draws people's attention um, towards who God is. We uh, also said that it meets people's needs. It demonstrates the love and compassion of God uh, in people's lives. So there are all these reasons why supernatural ministry is so important. We also saw that you know, there can be some challenges, um, uh, as in you know people uh, opposing the demonstration of God's power, uh, maybe they they don't understand it or you know they feel that uh, it's not supposed to happen in a time and age uh, that only the nature of you know for, for us to grow in maturity uh, or in the virtues uh, of God's nature is sufficient that you know, why should one even talk about things like healings, deliverance and all that. So we we had a, a discussion and we said that no, you know, the, Jesus himself placed emphasis on these supernatural demonstrations when, when uh, his, um, you know, the, the people around him were in doubt whether he's the Messiah. He pointed to the works that he did. And, and he said that, you know, these works, uh, uh, they speak of me, they speak of the Father. But even if you don't believe me, believe the works that I do. So he placed emphasis on these supernatural works, uh, which is why they are so important for us as believers. Today, we will try and focus on the need for believers to be supernatural or to demonstrate the supernatural power or to do the works of the kingdom the way Jesus did them. You know, what does the Bible have to say about it? it is, is it even uh, what the Bible is saying that believers today should be supernatural? Uh, so we're going to look at the possibility of every believer having this supernatural life or having a, a you know, a, this manifestation of the supernatural in and through their lives. So what does what are some of the scriptures that we can look at and substantiate what we are saying that believers need to be supernatural? So before I uh, get into looking at the scriptures, uh, any comments, any inputs from your side? You no, know, the Bible wants us to be supernatural. What do you think about that? Are we convinced or is it a struggle? For some of us, it could be a struggle where we know 
that you know, all these things happened in the Bible. And uh, Jesus also said that it'll happen through those who believe him. But you know, how do I see it happen in my life? So yeah. OK, so what we can do is we can uh, begin with the scriptures. And uh, we're always open to questions you know, or uh, your thoughts. So just feel free. It's more of you know, a time of uh, discussion uh, where we're all learning. And we are laying a strong foundation on the understanding of supernatural ministry. So we'll look at a couple of uh, scriptures. I've already posted this for uh, the Google Classroom students on the Classwork page. So you can open up file there. And let me also just project it for easier. Okay, please give me a moment. I'm finding it a little difficult to project it here. So, yes, yeah, it's open now. Okay. I hope you can all see it. Sorry about the delay there. So I said we are talking about the possibility of a supernatural life and ministry uh, of all believers. So the first and foremost reason why we can expect the supernatural life uh, is because this is an invitation of Jesus to his disciples and followers. So we can look at the pattern in the very ministry of Jesus. So let's first turn to Matthew chapter 10, um, verses 1, then 7 and 8. Can somebody please turn to it and read it for us? Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Verses 7 to 8. As you go, preach this message, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay. Thank you, Jafina. Thank you so much. So we saw the mandate that the Lord Jesus had for his own disciples. Um, he gave them the authority to go and do the works similar to the ones that he did. And uh, he told them, you go ahead and heal the sick, you cast out uh, demons, and you do the works of God among people. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 1, I'm going to read that. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. From this, we realize that Jesus did not limit the supernatural works to himself, even during his ministry. Uh, for him to do these works 
and uh, prove that he is the Messiah. You know, that's something that he did. But then he did not do these works just for you know people to uh, put him on a pedestal and only to uh, you know sort of um, boast of his greatness. Jesus never did that. He did the supernatural works of God, but he also groomed a group of 12 disciples, gave them the authority to walk in the same miracles that he did. And it's so obvious. He picked those 12 people and he told them, you please go ahead and do the works which I am telling you to do. So, uh, Jafina, could you please read again Matthew 10 verses 7 and 8? Once again, for us to hear, please. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. Thank you. So in, um, you know, continuation of the delegation of Jesus, he picked his 12 disciples and he told them, you go and uh, do these works. He gave them the authority. So they went ahead and did these uh, supernatural works of God. It didn't stop there. But we see that he also invited 70 other people to do these same supernatural works. Could uh, somebody else now turn to Luke chapter 10, please, verse 1 and then 17 through 19. If someone can read that, uh, we can discuss from there. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he has about to go. Verse 17. Uh, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Amen. Thank you, John. Thank you for reading that. So now we notice how 12 were given the authority first uh, and they did works like Jesus, supernatural works. 70 others were also given the authority. And Jesus himself says that, you know, I saw Satan fall like lightning or that um, the kingdom of God was demonstrated with great power that the enemy was defeated. So uh, it's, it's very clear that first the 12 and then the 70 also walked in the supernatural power of God. Now, not only them, but you had others who were following Jesus who demonstrated the supernatural in and through their life. So we have this example of an unknown or an unnamed man who also performed miracles. This is in Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 40. Uh, could somebody else uh, please read this passage for us? Azali, would you be able to read, please? Um, Mark chapter 9, verse 38 to 40. Now, John answered him, saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us, casting out demons in your name. And we forbid him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said, do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. 
Amen. So uh, we notice here that there was somebody who was not among Jesus' disciples who also walked in the supernatural. And when the disciples tried to stop him, verse 39, he says, Do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterward speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. So we notice that this unknown man did miracles. How he did miracles in the name of Jesus. And we've been seeing that Jesus gave the authority which he had to uh, his followers. So obviously, even though he was not one who was noted by uh, the, the disciples of Jesus, he is a follower of the Lord Jesus. That's what Jesus is saying later. He's saying if he's not against us, then he's on our side. So he too was witnessing the supernatural through his life by using the authority of the name of Jesus. It gives us so much of confidence. Today, after the cross, we have a lot of revelation about uh, the power of God, the anointing of God, uh, the name of Jesus, the weapons uh, of uh, spiritual warfare. But just imagine this unknown man is not even part of the close circle of the Lord Jesus. And yet, because he understood that the name of Jesus carried authority, he went around casting out demons with that understanding, knowing that the name of Jesus, it has the authority and uh, supernatural began to take place to the extent that the disciples noticed it. Okay? So um, uh, it really inspires us to uh, use everything that has been given to us and walk in the supernatural so even during the life and ministry of jesus he did not forbid people from walking in the supernatural power of god now let's continue uh, could somebody please read matthew 28 verses 18 through 20 this is the passage of the great commission so let's just um you know go over it and see what jesus is telling us Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Roosevelt. So as per the Great Commission, you know, we have been clearly told that Jesus gives his disciples, those who believe in him, the authority which we need. So verse 18, what did he say? He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Then he commissions them to go and do the work of the ministry. So he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So in speaking to us we notice that we also have been given authority he gave his disciples authority but he also gave us and scriptures tell us all authority and we are supposed to go and make disciples and also you know teach them everything that we have been taught so what were the disciples taught so far, we have seen they were uh, uh, taught about the kingdom of God, but they were also taught about the power of the kingdom of God. And they were given authority and Jesus instructed them to go and perform these signs, wonders and miracles 
you know, everywhere they went to do the works of healings. So obviously, we who come after you know, these 12 and uh, 70 disciples, we have the same mandate. So it is so much part of what has been taught to the disciples to carry on with the supernatural power of God and all the authority of God. So we have the Great Commission and the Great Commission also carries uh, uh, you know, this mandate to walk in the supernatural. So at this point, I'm going to pause and uh, just want to talk to all of us here. You know, what are you thinking? Are there any questions? Uh, anything that you wanted to ask? We can discuss and then proceed further. So is there any doubt that, you know, Jesus, uh, about this thing that Jesus gave us the authority to walk in the supernatural power of God? Is there any, you know, doubt regarding that? If so, then why, why is there a doubt? You could go ahead and ask. Let's see if, you know, I am able to answer your question. Can I ask you a question? Yes, yes, Isaac, please go ahead. Okay, so um, my question is, uh, why was uh, Jesus so passionate to delegate this supernatural authorities uh, to us now, first to the disciples and then to us now? Why was he so passionate to delegate this responsibility? And what? Well, Sorry, this uh, authority and what is our responsibility once we have taken up this uh, 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 authority for me? What is our responsibility as Christians? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Um, yes, why was Jesus so passionate to give us this uh, authority? And what is our responsibility? So based on what we had discussed in the last class, that the demonstration of the power of God really reveals the nature of God. And we know that he is a supernatural God. So God wants to reveal himself, you know, in all the fullness uh, that, that is of him. And which is one of the main reasons, I think, that God wants us to continue to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and the demonstration of the supernatural. Otherwise, you know, we are limiting God. If, if everything we do and pray for is confined you know, to uh, the limitations of this world, then how are we, you know, in, how are we... Uh, asking a supernatural God to intervene in our circumstances. So it's because God himself is supernatural that he so passionately wants us also to be supernatural. And what is our responsibility? One is to understand you know, what the supernatural is all about, which we are doing right now, and to walk in it. Or in other words, to let the supernatural manifest through our lives. So that becomes our responsibility. So uh, we have to not just understand, but also go after or pursue the supernatural. So that is the responsibility of the believers. So does it help, Isaac, or you have any other questions following this? Well, not really. I agree with you because um, by what we have been reading, like in our last semester, the believer's authority, yeah, we know that by the fall of the first Adam, man lost his authority. And Jesus uh, reclaimed it. I like the word he said, 
that God wanted us to operate in this supernatural because he knew or he knows that the evil one is always in the world and he wants to dominate the world. And that's why he gave us this authority and power so that we can counter his act and continue to bring up his kingdom so that his kingdom will reign on earth. Thank you very much, Ma. Amen. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you so much for sharing. That was good. Uh, Paul, I saw you uh, raising your hand. Is there anything you want yes. to add to? No, I'm asking another question. Yes, please. Uh, we, re we read a scripture which says uh, there were some people also who are casting demons and the, and, and the apostles of Jesus uh, rebuked them. And when he told them to Jesus, Jesus said, ah, leave them. If they are not against us, they are for us. Now, today, doesn't that give rooms for, for the false prophets to operate? Because we have false prophets, they also do miracles. So that's, and that scripture gives then room for them also to operate. I just wanted your comment about it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Very good question. So whenever we um, talk about the supernatural, there's always this question of the counterfeit. Um, so one thing for us to recognize is uh, when something is precious, when something is really good, when something is worth imitating, that is when a counterfeit you know, gets made um, against it. So when we talk about the uh, false prophets and the supernatural, which is demonstrated you know, by people who don't belong to the kingdom of God, you know, we, we realize that uh, Satan always wants to compete with what God is doing, and he will come up with you know certain uh, uh, demonstrations of, of so-called power. Okay, uh, in in the, uh, the kingdom of darkness. So, having said this, some basics that we would come back to is whenever we talk of the uh, supernatural, we have to look at the fruit of the supernatural. Okay, so what is that? What is being accomplished through the supernatural? Are people able to know who God is? Or are they able to see the nature of God? You know that, oh, okay, you know, Jesus healed me. God is such a loving God. He's such a gracious God. He's a forgiving God. Or you know, uh, these miracles that are taking place, are they drawing the hearts of the people towards God or Jesus? So that is the fruit you know, we are looking at. So we have to ask the question, uh, are these results drawing people to God? If they are, then you know uh, we cannot term those people who are manifesting the supernatural in for example in uh, mark 9 we saw that there was somebody who was doing miracles but those miracles were also uh, turning people towards god and which is why jesus said if he's not against me he's for me don't stop him don't forbid him from doing this work but the people who are manifesting the supernatural through uh, the kingdom of darkness. There are two sources for the supernatural. One is the kingdom of God and the power of God. The second one is the kingdom of darkness. And we know that this, the uh, enemy or Satan is the one who does those supernatural works. Those works will lead people away from God. So when you see certain things happening, you'll also be able to notice whether people are being drawn towards God or they are being drawn away from God. And that in itself will tell you, you know, where this power is coming from. So if you notice, if you are able to understand that this is not from God and it is drawing people away from God, stay away from such false uh, prophets and their works, their ministries. Does, does it help, uh, Paul? Yes, yes. Okay. See, because one of the 
uh, functions of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, he will glorify me. So the power of the Spirit, you know, when it is demonstrated in all these signs, wonders and miracles, it is supposed to glorify the name of Jesus. If it is not glorifying the name of Jesus, then that power is questionable. Okay, so whenever we see uh, uh, such things going on, drawing people away from the word, away from uh, the, you know, away from Jesus, then th that power is not something that we should, uh, you know, accept or affirm. Yeah. So very good questions. Thank you so much. Very relevant. No, we should be asking these questions when we talk about the supernatural. Anything else? Uh, please feel free. It's good to discuss. OK, that's nice. So uh, we so far have learned that Jesus was the one. He did the miracles. And he also invited his disciples to do the miracles. <coughs> Sorry. It includes us as well, right? Who believe in the Lord Jesus. So the great commission we will fulfill with the power of God and the demonstration of the supernatural. And just going back to what I was saying earlier, there can be a lot of counterfeit, but that should not stop us from going with the original. Okay. Uh, we, in fact, must be encouraged that the power of God is so real that Satan even wants to try and imitate it. So keep moving forward with what is real and what is true. Now, we've seen the mandate. Now let's uh, delve a little deeper into the mandate which Jesus has for us. Let's look at uh, some other passages. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 14, and then John chapter 2, verse 11. So could somebody please read these two verses for us? John chapter 1 verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Yeah, thank you, Jeffina. So just want to uh, dwell on a few things here before you can read John 2, 11. So it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. It talks about glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. We know that before Jesus came to the earth, he carried a heavenly glory. If you look at Philippians chapter 2, we see there that Jesus left behind his heavenly glory and he came here to the earth. So the heavenly glory has to do with God's omnipotence, his omniscience, his omnipresence. But Jesus left all that and he came to the world. He became a man. So it says the word became flesh. In other words, flesh is limited, isn't it, compared to the the glory of God in heaven, he became flesh. So he limited himself on the earth. He dwelt among us. And what kind of glory did he carry when he was here on the earth? Uh, John says, we saw this glory. We beheld this glory. We also term this glory. Or glory is nothing but who God is and what he does. So how did God reveal himself You know, when the word became flesh? John says, full of grace and truth. 
so the sonship glory or the glory which god carried uh, in jesus here on the earth was filled with what grace and truth so grace uh, in this context has to do with virtues so god's nature is so virtuous all the uh, anything that that is good arises from him so he he's filled with goodness he's filled with righteousness so he's filled with holiness that is the nature which jesus displayed so full of grace full of truth and that is uh, who jesus came across as here on the world and we call that as sonship glory or the revelation you know of the power of god came through in that manner with his virtues with his truth now let's move forward uh, john chapter 2 and verse 11 jefina could you please read this john chapter 2 verse 11 This the first of his miraculous signs Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. Amen. So that's so beautiful. We just saw that the sonship glory of Jesus on the earth. What did it comprise of? Grace. It comprised of truth. And now. John chapter two in verse eleven, when Jesus did the miraculous, the water was turned into wine. What do we read? He manifests his glory. So, part of the sonship glory is what? Power, grace, truth, power. We see Jesus walking in all of these aspects and revealing you know, who God is to. the people around so this is how you know, uh, jesus showed the glory which we are calling as the sonship glory now let's continue and see you know what kind of prayers jesus prayed for his believers and what uh, was his heart about the kind of glory which his followers or disciples should carry so john chapter 17 Verse five and verse twenty-two. Uh, would somebody quickly turn to this and read it, please? Then John chapter seventeen, uh, Rosalind. John chapter seventeen verse five and twenty two, and now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Verse twenty two, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. Okay, thank you, Roslyn. Um, and I think it's quite clear for us to understand, isn't it? So when Jesus was going back to the Father, he was, you know, in John um, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. We see the preparation was going on uh, for Jesus to go to the cross, and he prays different prayers over there. And uh, particularly over here, what he's saying is, Father, I'm ready to come back. And embrace the glory which you had given me in heaven. So that is to do with you know, the the uh, the uh, omnipotence or the immeasurable power of God. I'm going to come back and receive all of that. But what does He want for the believers? In verse twenty-two, He says, "And the glory which you gave me." That is when the Word became flesh, the sonship glory that Jesus had on the earth. He's saying, "I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one." So Jesus was looking forward to going back to heaven, but at the same time, he gave away that sonship glory which he had to his disciples. So. 
uh, what do we conclude? We will conclude that this is what Jesus wants for all his disciples to demonstrate the sonship glory. What does the sonship glory have? We said grace, which is virtues. When we uh, walk in forgiveness, when we walk in love, when we walk in you know generosity, when we walk in the goodness of God, what's happening? We are demonstrating the grace of God, truth. When we walk in righteousness, you know, or we walk in the things that are correct, which are right before uh, God's eyes, we are walking in sonship glory and walking in the aspect of truth. But we also need to be walking in the power of God. You know, the way when Jesus turned the water into wine, what happened? His glory was manifest. What glory did Jesus have at that time? Sonship glory. And what did he say in John 17, 22? I am giving them the glory which you gave me. And that glory also has power or the supernatural. So all believers you know does it say that only pastors or teachers or you know uh, apostles prophets evangelists they are the only people who have the sonship glory no all the believers father i'm giving it to them those who believe in me jesus is giving it to the believer so uh, we have a mandate from god so today we are looking at the possibility. You know, what is the possibility of all believers walking in the supernatural? There is, you know, a hundred percent possibility. Reason being, it is Jesus who has called us to such power and authority. Okay. Uh, so now that we've understood this, you know, what what would be some of the uh, questions that that you might have? Jesus called us to walk in power. So clear. And he has given us the sonship glory. So what should we do now? Yes, I think we should walk in the authority as delegated mm -hmm. to us. And we should walk according to imitate in Jesus, walk freely, so that I mean, we can manifest this authority that was given to us. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Isaac. So we must walk in that authority. We have to uh, walk with Jesus. That's a beautiful point. We'll look at some of the keys to manifesting uh, the supernatural power of God. But you said walk with God so that we are able to manifest. That makes complete sense. So as we're walking with him, we will begin to reveal uh, all this you know, sonship glory so that's that's right thank you isaac we need to demonstrate it we need to walk in it yeah any other uh, thoughts questions Okay, so are we all walking in it? If Jesus has already given it to all believers, are we all walking in it? What do you that think? Was, oh man, that was my question. Like what we do when we fail? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, Rosalind. So, uh, you know, uh, when we see the mandate of Jesus, it's very clear. We need to walk in that power and authority. What do we do when we fail is to keep going back to what Jesus has said. Because it reminds us, it reiterates the truth that we have been given authority, we have been given power, and we can walk in it. Okay, So just because we have... Um, you know, some incidents where we don't see the manifestation of God's power, uh, we shouldn't stop there. We have to keep going back to the standard of God's word, the truth of God's word, which does not change over time. 
isn't it? So if Jesus has already given the glory to us, he never took it back. So in my experience, for whatever reason, I may have failed, but I need to hold on to the truth that I still carry the authority. I still have the power which Jesus has given me to walk in the supernatural works of God. So that's what I would say. That is one puzzle. So to hold on to the truth. Second is to ask the question, if I did not demonstrate the power of God in this case, let's say healing. Okay, we prayed for somebody's healing. That person didn't get healed. As a personal note, I can ask, okay, what did I do as I ministered that I could have done better? Let me build myself up you know, in those areas before I minister the next time. So in this way, what's happening? I'm not letting go of the truth of God's word that I can walk in the supernatural. Secondly, I'm improving. I am, um, you know, strengthening myself to demonstrate the glory each time. I'm on a path of progress, okay? And I can expect, um, even if I failed a few times, I'm going forward. I'll definitely see God's glory being manifest, you know, as I keep trusting Him. Does it help, Rosalind, or what do you think about uh, yes, what I said? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. It, sure. it did help. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, wonderful. You know, we need to be practical. So it will be really nice if you ask me all these questions. We should be talking about all of this. Okay. All right. So um, let's look at a few more uh, verses here. Uh, which again remind us that we need to be like Jesus. So 1 John 2 verse 6 and uh, 1 John 4 verse 17. Uh, if someone can read that, we'll, we'll close with these scriptures for now and then we'll come back next week and start off from there. Uh, 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. Yes. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. 1 John 4 17 love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world amen amen uh, and the next scripture there you know, second peter 1 3, just tells us that god has blessed us with everything we need for life and godliness so we completely uh, recognize that the Lord Jesus has given us a mandate for us to walk you know, in the sonship glory of the Lord Jesus as he was. So we are in this world. We need to walk the way he walked, these scriptures say. So how did he walk? He walked with virtue. How did he walk? He walked with truth. How did he walk? He walked with power. So. That is exactly how I should walk as a believer. So we'll come back and we'll touch on the empowering of the Holy Spirit before we move on to other parts uh, of our study of the supernatural ministry. And let's close with a word of prayer. Would uh, anyone from the class please lead in prayer? Okay, Rosalind, can I request you, please? Wonderful, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this teaching that you have given us, Lord. Lord, you have chosen us for this time, Lord, so that we may know the, the hidden mysteries of your word. Lord, we pray, Father God, even as, as we are learning on supernatural things, Father God, let us go deep into this teaching lord and understand lord what glory you have given us lord you have shared the same glory with us oh lord we thank you for this privilege daddy god we pray father god whatever we learn lord let us apply it 
and, and thereby let us see the kingdom of God grow and expand for your glory. Use each and every one of us. Lord, we pray, Father God. I also thank you for our dear Pastor Nancy, Lord. Bless her, Father God, and anoint her even more, Father God, that as she carries out your will on this earth, Father God. Thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rosalyn. Thank you, everyone, for uh, connecting on this call. Uh, please continue to meditate on all these uh, passages. And uh, let's talk some more. And I'll meet you next week, uh, next class. So bye for now. God bless.